Wow, my dirty hair is really working for me today. <laughs> oh, hold on. I don't have you. Let me get you on the full view. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get you on the full. Yeah. A Lauren, lot of height. It's a lot of height, and I haven't washed it. But you know what? Day old hair. It's not bad. Same. I have to say, we need to sort of reach out to other on-camera people, I think just nationwide, and ask, is anyone washing their hair? Because I'm finding it not, I'm finding it helpful because, you know, I usually deal with flyaways, but it's so, it's so greasy that yeah. you're just staying down. Hey, listen, that is a quarantine hair hack. If I ever seen it, wait, is this thing on? Are people watching us right now? <laughs> Everybody, we're just doing a little vibe check. Uh, with Lauren Zima and Denny Directo. This is ET Live at Home. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, guys. We have so much to get through today, including Florence Pugh, the Little Women star and Oscar nominee, coming out against the haters and defending her man, Zach Braff. Plus, I had just talked to him, so a little soundbite from him on his relationship with the actress. We are also getting into the trend of recreating our favorite movie scenes. You will not believe the one Ariana Grande chose. And Jessica Simpson doing a different recreation, her Rolling Stone cover, how things look different yet the same years later. Meanwhile, Justin Timberlake apparently is now open to talking about an in sync reunion. Finally, a little feel good story to end today's show. Tyler Perry buys groceries for senior citizens and high risk shoppers in Atlanta and New Orleans. So, plenty of good stuff to get through. I have so much to say about our first story, so I want to dive right in. Yes. So Florence Pugh, first of all, if you guys didn't see Little Women, it was a major awards show movie this year and a big hit, but watch it during the quarantine. It's such a good uh, telling of the well-known story. So she kind of broke out with this movie, right? Um, Oscar nominee from it. She's in her early 20s, and she's just hit the scene. But the reason that she is speaking out on her Instagram is to do with her relationship. Take a quick listen. I am 24 years old. I do not need you to tell me who I should and should not love. And I would never in my life ever, ever tell anyone who they can and cannot love. It is not your place. Um, and really, it has nothing to do with you. Okay, so Florence is dating Zach Braff, yep. the former star of Scrubs, and they have a 21-year age gap. And long story short, she posted a photo celebrating his 45th birthday, and apparently the hate in the comments was so bad that she had to turn the comments off, so she comes and she speaks out against the haters. I just could not side with Florence more. Yep. I'm dating a guy who's 17 years older than me. Wow, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and... I just think, first of all, there's never a place for hate. But mm -hmm. second of all, really now, as she points out, like when we all should be coming together, this is what people are taking their time to do. And if you really get into the nitty gritty of it, I've just always felt that as long as you are a consenting adult, mm. relationships are about two people coming together with who they've become mm -hmm. through their life experiences. Like, I mean, I've always said, look, I, I went through some stuff earlier in life that I think aged me up a little bit. I'm an old 32, okay? <laughs> an old soul, if you will. I am. Yeah. So I think that that's what it's about for me. Like you look at somebody like Florence, okay, let's just really break down where she's at in her life. Already an Oscar nominee yeah. on a global stage in her career in her early 20s. She's probably a more mature than somebody in their early 20s who hasn't stopped living at home yet. So you know what? Go ahead and enjoy that time with Zach Braff, okay? Well, I personally believe that age really is nothing but a number, but forget about what I feel and my personal beliefs because I don't, it's wild to me that people feel like they can actually share their own thoughts and opinions on someone else's relationship, especially when you don't know them. It might be one thing if it's coming from a family member privately or whatever, and you know, them voicing how they feel about it, but to go into the comments like trolls, she is 24 years old, and that's what Florence was saying. She goes, I'm a 24 year old old adult I can decide who I want to love it is none of your business and also if you don't like it you can unfollow me um and so I appreciated that and she even doubled down on that by actually responding to people who were still criticizing her in her latest post but the best thing about it there was some positivity Ariana Grande Ariana defended her she commented on the post oh I love and appreciate you so much and she also wrote because she quoted Florence from the video being hateful is not trendy a new tattoo for my chest. 
I appreciated the girl power because obviously Ari herself has gone through her own fair share of being dragged through the mud because of her relationships. And in fact, she actually posted in a since deleted Instagram story about Florence's post saying that she, she kind of shared her own traumatic experience, sharing personal life things, and says she has taken a step back from doing so to protect my loved ones and myself, and I don't blame her. Yeah, for me, it's so the difference of, like, look, I'm not going to say I never give my opinion on things. Uh, I weigh in. I I talk about stuff. I think it's healthy to keep an open dialogue. Like, I have no problem talking about age gaps in relationships. Let's discuss it. Tell me how you feel about it. Maybe you'll open my eyes to something. Um, Because, honestly, I used to feel differently about it. When I was much younger, I used to think, like, that's so bizarre when people, you know, and it's, like, gross when uh, older guys date younger women. And then a good friend of mine, literally talked to me about her dad who was dating a much younger woman. She's like, she, the woman's only a couple years older than me, but my dad's a really young soul and they're really happy. And so that makes me happy. And it yeah. totally changed my perspective just to have that conversation with my friend. So I think keep the dialogue going. To me, the difference is don't take it to a place of hate. You're yes. sitting there, you're slamming people, you're you know calling names, you're, you're putting aggressive verbs on it. Like who does that help? And mm. what does that do that's productive? Like if you really have a problem with someone's relationship, do you really think that you're going to make a proactive effect by coming at it from right. a place of anger and aggression? The answer is no. The answer is no. And also because you have to remember that every relationship is so different. Like, how do we know that they didn't discuss this age gap? Also, if it was an issue of where they are in their lives, like if there was a huge difference and it was really affecting their relationship, they would do something about it. But again, none of that is our business. <laughs> and they're <laughs> They're quarantining together. <laughs> like, oh my God, yeah. Literally, before, a, a couple of hours before Florence posted that uh, Instagram video, I was interviewing Zach Braff and Donald Faison, his longtime friend and Scrubs co-star, about their new podcast. Yeah. It's called Fake Doctors, Real Friends. They go back and look at Scrubs episodes, so check it out because they're Love bringing that. joy to people. So I interviewed them and I just asked, you know, we've been asking everybody, how's quarantining going? Who are you quarantining with? And Zach uh, talked a little bit about him and Florence and how they're balancing the work at home. Take a look. I'm hunkering down with my girlfriend and a brand new puppy and a very old dog. Uh, we, we decided uh, we were going to foster a dog um, because a lot of the shelters out here are looking for people to, to help foster animals during this time. And I learned a new term on, on the internet. It's called hashtag foster fail. That's when you try to foster a dog and then you fall in love with it immediately and decide you're going to officially adopt the dog. <laughs> and uh, that's what happened to us. We, we, we fell in love and we foster failed and now we have a puppy. I've gotten really good at dishes, I got to say, because my girlfriend's an amazing chef and uh, I can't cook at all. And so I had to step up and really, I got to tell you, I, I never really made doing the dishes into an art form. Like I, 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 I always dreaded it, but now I've got my, my, my different tools lined up. So look, they're adopting a dog together. He's doing the dishes while she, he's, she's playing chef. So, hey. They're just trying to live their lives and be happy, okay? <laughs> They're in love. You can't. You love who you love, okay? Period. D- Good on her for actually speaking out, and even better on Ari to throw her support. But when Ariana is not busy defending <laughs> Florence Pugh, she is busy recreating Waterboy scenes. Uh, let's take a look at one of them, actually. Vicky is an astrologist. I don't believe in that sort of thing personally. Astronomy is one of the many tools of the devil. You sure played great yesterday, Bobby. What did my boy play great? Uh, mm, water boy. Yeah, water boy. He played. Um, he played water boy great. Everybody who was thirsty got a drink right away. That's how you lift up the precision, the acting. There was props. I mean, she's really going all out. Obviously, trying to uh, presumably pass the time in quarantine. But the best part about it is that she tweeted these out, and then the water boy himself. Adam Sandler responded to both, to two of them. He approves. He loves it. He said, Bobby Boucher approves. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's like following it, like the plot line. He's like, oh, that was a rough day for Mama and Bobby or whatever he said. Yeah, I like, know. This was so fun because I love when we see that celebrities share a bit of the same nostalgia and fandom that we do. You yeah. know, it it's something that social media offers to us that years ago we didn't have. Like years and years ago, maybe you'd see a quick bite in an interview where a celebrity fangirled or fanboyed out over something. But now you can really see it. And especially now when everybody has this time on their hands. Um, and then. 
I want to call out yeah. like yeah. everybody who's doing it because our own girl, Ashley Crossin, an ET online host, has been doing this with every Jim Carrey movie under the sun. Take a quick look. Dad's taking me to see wrestling. <sighs> Fletcher. <sighs> Audrey. Well, why do you have to take him to see that stuff? It's very violent. The boy must grow to be a warrior. <sighs> Who better to guide him than Rick Rude and Randy Macho Man Savage in the cage of death? <laughs> oh, good. She's crushing it. You guys got to follow her on TikTok. And as she tweets them out, it's amazing. Jim Carrey is her favorite actor. Liar Liar is her, I think, easily her favorite Jim Carrey movie. She once quoted it with him on a red carpet. Like, it's insane. And I feel like these lip dubs, you and I can relate. Like, we love, a li you've been doing it, I've been doing it. It's like my <laughs> new favorite genre on TikTok, but my favorite thing to lip dub, of course, are the Kardashians from Keeping Up. And like the Kardashian and Jenners are doing that of, to, the, to each other. It, they have so many, like, we've also been going into the vault, I feel like, a, as a culture and finding these old, like, Kardashians moments or Housewives moments that yeah. become applicable now. Like, I kind of wish that social media was bigger during the early days of Kardashians and Housewives and oh. Bachelor because, oh my gosh, like, we, we just need to bring it all back. Bachelor, that's another thing I keep pop seeing pop up on TikTok. People recreating, like, Corinne's, like, one-liners from the show and stuff. Uh, right. I I live for it. Um, uh, speak, let's yeah. talk Jessica Simpson recreating uh, not a video clip, but her Rolling Stone cover, which I got to tell you, I'd forgotten about. Uh, let's uh, pull up the original. This was in the newlyweds, like Nick Lachey era. Okay, Denny. The original one. Did you ever notice this? What? Did you ever notice that right under Jessica Simpson's story for Housewife of the Year? So she's married to Nick Lachey here, right? Right, yes. Right under it is a story about John Mayer seeking a girlfriend, and later they dated. St that literally stopped you in your tracks. Wait, I never noticed that. <gasps> of course, John, oh my God. John Mayer and Jessica Simpson were an item back in the day. I never noticed that. This was in 2000 and- Zoom it in, 2003? 03. November 27th, 03? 2003. Wow. Rolling Stone predicted it? I didn't know this. <laughs> I'm shook. I'm shook. You gotta tweet that. I never saw that. But can we talk about how, okay, look, before we move on and see how she recreated it, this headline and cover does not hold up in this era housewife okay. of the year no she I, is look. a mogul fashion mogul a mother a musical pop icon, icon. i just think the vibe of this cover does not hold so well, i think that makes the recreation even better <laughs> i was just about to say you guys look at what she did she is fully wearing tie-dye sweats now makeup free she still got that swiffer though i gotta say one last thing all my love to jess what are those slippers? There's a lot going on with this outfit. Hey, you know what? No judgment when you're at home, right? <laughs> like you and I have, honestly, you know what? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Hold on. What? I'm, I'm wearing like gym shorts right now, girl. <laughs> okay. I don't want to hear it. Like I'm wearing a nice, respectful button up that I did steam, but let's not lie. I got gym shorts on and house slippers. All right. Don't judge her. Don't come for Jess like that. <laughs> From I... Jessica Simpson to Justin Timberlake. I am fully shooketh by this. Yeah. I kind of feel that the quarantine may be emotionally affecting everyone and may be encouraging celebrities to like dig into the fans who love them because everybody sit down. Apparently Justin Timberlake is closer to being cool with an NSYNC reunion. Okay, uh, we've been waiting for this forever when he did not show up to their surprise Coachella set with Ariana Grande last year. He also did not give us the reunion at his Super Bowl performance. Correct. All correct, but what's crazy is Lance Bass revealed to Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live that JT is actually participating in the virtual happy hours with the rest of the guys weekly. That's what Lance says. So first of all, he's connecting with the guys. We don't get to, that's not even for the cameras. Like he's just participating. Again, what else are you gonna do? He's in Montana quarantining with Jessica Biel. He recently said he's being he's getting real tired of being a 24 hour parent. So I don't blame him. Why not have a little cocktail with his boys? But what's amazing is Lance and Justin were on their podcast, and Lance said JT is getting more open to talking about a reunion. It's like let's bring it on. Yeah, I, I think Lance even noted he was telling this to Andy Cohen that you know, it was kind of cool that Justin had even come on the podcast. Like he's taking these steps. I remember interviewing JC Chazé. It was over a year ago now when they did their in sync pop-up um, for the anniversary yeah. of uh, 
the band or maybe no strings attached in yeah. LA. And JC Shaw's, they gave me a tour and he was like, look, we do all talk on a group text a lot. Like they consistently have had a group text going, which when you think about how long they've known each other, that's like decades of staying in touch. Um, but for Justin to be like jumping on the happy hours, he did go when they got their walk of fame star. Oh, of course. Right. But, um, I remember reading that I don't think he went and like grabbed drinks with them after the Walk of Fame star. So oh. yeah, so it was. It's cool to me to hear that he's jumping on the zooms, that he's hanging with them. Like I think there's always been love there, but I also think yeah. he he does seem to have had a little bit of like a wall up on going full reunion. Like you said, didn't go to Coachella. Mm -hmm. So oh my gosh, this I would be the love moments that people need right now <laughs> people really need it and i don't even know if i need a tour which sounds crazy to say but like put out some music with nscene because i gotta tell you bro justin man of the woods wasn't it it wasn't it i didn't need it i don't i know kids need the trolls world tour right now which is fine you got kids and everyone loves an animated feature but like i need some good music and i would love Backstreet Boys are doing it. They're doing the Vegas residency. It's like, give us the instinct. If I had a, I was team in sync back in the day. I don't know about you. So I need it. I need to hear it. I, we would love to see it. Look, if we look at the hits that came out of Man of, Man of the Woods, there, there just weren't the chart toppers. They did not come out of it. I know the tour did really well. Right. right, um, right. I, I, I would say I don't need a full album. How do you feel about it? Okay, you want like a single? Like I think if he did a song, I think if it was, look, how iconic was that moment when Beyonce did the Super Bowl and she brought Kelly and Michelle? Oh. Like we will not forget that. To me, it was a huge missed opportunity for Justin at that Super Bowl performance that he didn't just do a similar thing where he brought them out for a couple songs and paid homage to how his career took off. Let's, so, let's not forget 2013 Super Bowl with Destiny Shower Reunion and then 2018 Coachella. Yeah. Both weekends. Thank you very much. Beyond. The Bay Pace tribute, you know, and yeah. I think Justin's been missing that boat. I think fans would be happy is all I'm saying. If yeah. it was just some kind of amazing performance, like one awesome, like one new song, something like that, you wouldn't have to go the full commitment of an album or a full tour or something. Uh, until then, I'm really happy he's actually hanging out and talking with the guy. I know that there's always been love and there's like a group chain, uh, but I love that he's participating in these virtual happy hours because we all are, right, with our friends. So yes. it's beautiful. And you know what? Let's yeah. end on some love. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love this story so much. Uh, the photos really do it justice. Tyler Perry, uh, the media mogul and movie producer, he uh, surprised some senior citizens and high-risk shoppers in New Orleans and Atlanta by paying for their groceries. He picked up the tab at 29 Winn-Dixie locations in NOLA and 44 Kroger stores in Atlanta for unsuspecting shoppers. Like you can see it in these photos, they are so shocked. And you know, in, in this time, you wanna limit as much time as you're going out to go buy groceries. So people are stocking up, you know? And so to get all of these pay, uh, all of these groceries paid for with a little note of gratitude from Tyler Perry is amazing. And this comes days after he reported gave out like over twenty thousand dollars in tips at, for work servers at an Atlanta restaurant. Like it just, it's amazing. It, it makes you feel good about it. Yeah, to me, it's just that message of however you can help your neighbor, help somebody you don't know right now. Like if we all do a little bit, it goes a long way. And here he made a, a big step. So we thank you, Tyler Perry, and I think we're just gonna play everybody out on these photos. Enjoy, you guys. Stay all safe. All right, Denny D. I'll see ya. Bye, Bye. Lauren.